Hello everybody, my name is Arun Kulashima and in this video I am going to be giving a code explanation of the game Run for Fruit which, you, which uh, I recommend you to go ahead and watch the previous video on, which gives you a game demonstration ok so now let's go ahead and do the code explanation shall we so um, you may have noticed I just recently changed that right pen in there no big deal here ok and um, let's see so I'm gonna try and make this as self contained as possible so over here I used something new called resources which allow a uh, resources folder which allow you to access them during runtime without having a reference to it it's a very nice thing and we'll, we'll get to that right in the first script right then and there okay so over here uh, botanical association botanical asop for short because it's just very short and I like short things okay so now we have signal to not destroy on load if I don't explain this to you you are probably going to be scratching it unless you know about this okay so we have something called don't destroy on load which just means that we will create a temporary separate screen over here don't destroy on load so and anything in that don't destroy on load will always when a scene changes will not get destroyed during the load it's uh, during scene change meaning it persists through scene changes and the reason for keeping this is because i don't want to keep is in loading many many large files but well, not a large but there are quite a few of them how many you may ask uh 131 so loading all of those 131 files in association I mean lines in association then passing them will be time consuming and will again take some time well I already said that but it's very uh, so doing it over and over again will be uh, inefficient okay so that's why we are doing it singleton not destroy load singleton just means there's only one instance of this class meaning uh, if it is not destroy load there can be two of don't destroy load of the same class meaning two botanical associations might be there but we don't have to do that only one single thing. that's it. okay and uh, this makes it such that uh, any other instances are completely destroyed okay and over here we have the over here we have the i read only dictionary i means interface interface means uh, something yeah, all the members of an interface are public and you just must Moment. Okay, and you must implement everything that's given in the interface kind of like an abstract class which I, which I might have discovered in post data but except over here all of this you can you can inherit from multiple interfaces or like classes which only one and an interface you have to implement p value this meaning a x a <coughs> index so this is called an indexer it's a read only so again only only get indexer not set okay and then we have i numerable keys and values those keys sorry those keys i believe are just key underscore underscore botanical association dot keys and values um speaking of which i use a, another dictionary inside itself so if you're wondering why don't just make this public because i need to do some setup and all that okay and i have not made this directly public because i want it to be partially safe and uh, and again i also need to do some checking whether or not if it is there or not because if it does not exist then we are just going to set the botanical equivalent to well the key you passed it in it isn't any but uh, sort of cheat and all that but i'm sure that is uh, acceptable we do log a warning and i have went through a uh, script has went through all of these um let's just say vegetables fruits and vegetable names and checked if there's a botanical association and yes there is okay so let's get back to the code shall we and so here if it is if it is null 
world, meaning it doesn't exist. It's obviously going to start out as null, and if it is not null, this is the only place where it is assigned. So if it is null, then we do all this setup. So what we do here is we construct a new dictionary. This is all normal. You've always seen constructors and all that before. And so we do resources dot load text asset. This just loads a text asset. Text asset means that dot txt file with the name with the name botanical association. Uh, note extensions are not quite there. It's kind of the first mistake I made. I had to I thought I had to put a txt, but then I found it wasn't working earlier. Uh, what what might happen now might be a little bit different, but then again this works. So the, uh, not putting in the extension will be just fine. Okay, and then when we get the text asset, it will return a text asset, and we get the text, and then we convert it to lowercase, and then we replace all these uh, uh, carriage return line please. So control R control uh, backslash R backslash N carriage return line please. So we're replacing all carriage returns with a with a null string because it could be quite, they will be quite problematic because we can't quite split them at two strings. Okay. okay. And then we'll just split them at a new line character. And then for each botanical association line, all these lines, because we're splitting it, will be a string. Well, just means we'll automatically reduce it. So just to make things more clearer, we load the text asset, get its text, we convert it to lowercase, replace carriage return with a uh, <coughs> null string. Note here you could also use this string dot empty, which I will. And then we also have a new line character, which will split it according to the new line character, meaning it will just uh, <coughs> uh, remove the, every, pla every place that there is that new line character, it will be split and it will convert it into a an array at every place before and after the new line character was for example if we have i don't know like this now let me say string dot s p l i t split at say a b c a b c a b c and we we split a b c oh, sorry. I meant <laughs> sorry we split a b c a b c a b c at character c then the output will be a string of a b let's repeat three times a b a b and a b because now it's splitting it at this a b the, the only difference is we have a new line characters at here and what it won't actually look like that though at the end there isn't really a new line character so we can get rid of it because it's a, oops, sorry. It's a kind of i believe on defined behavior and and that's about it okay so that's a brief primer on split uh note one moment there it is now casing matters there too unless you're working in visual basic in which it won't matter okay so then, so once we've got all the lines, we loop through each line and we split it again at the equal character. Meaning on this side, we'll have the common names and on the other side, we'll have the botanical names. This is how I've kept it. If you'd like to confirm, then take a look at Prunus. Anus is Prunus, Dulicus, Apple is Malus, Malus Domestica, and so on and so forth. Okay? And all of those are important from my website which you don't quite remember and then we just get the first value so split at zero meaning the common names and split one meaning the botanical names okay and then we return this k botanical names okay and well k underscore underscore is generally a thing that's used for backing fields if you ever use auto properties and yes i have I've seen k and they have to create a time little variable in the background and for that they they do k underscore underscore backing and then they put all this but backing is also in like uh, these angled brackets we can't have angled brackets so k underscore underscore is good enough okay 
and this just means an index and I'll I, I show you it right now. Oh, here it is. Uh, we'll get to that. That is the next thing on the list. So over here, we'll have their setting of the whole botanical association dictionary. Over here, we try and get the value. Try get value is a thing. Uh, I should do a k underscore underscore botanical association dot try get value, but this is what it calls. So not really much of a difference, if you will. Okay. So back to here. So we try and get the value and out variable botanical equivalent. Just get the original botanical equivalent. If there is no botanical equivalent, then we log warning. Uh, no botanical equivalent for key. And then we set it to the original key. Okay? And then we return the botanical equivalent. Okay? So, done. Finish. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, so, that is just for the botanical association. That's all completed. Okay? So, now let's go for camera follow. Mm. Oops. So, next to next. This, uh, this one is next. Okay? The game object player and camera speed, which I currently set to 7.5 because I wanted to move faster. And then the original position, we set the original position to the transformer position. And every fixed update just means it will be called as the fixed interval rather than a random interval. Well, not random every time a new frame is a fixed interval. A fixed update happens every single fixed frame at a, frame, at a fixed rate, actually. And so we uh, lerp, as in linearly interpolate from transfor transformer position to orig original lerp position to player mm, player or transformer position. So technically it's not required, but then again, it's not required. But it would require, it's not required, but this is what I have and I don't quite want to go ahead and try it. Because then again, this is a direct, this is a direct Field, so it is easier to access than the property because it involves function calls. Okay, so properties are slightly slower than fields, but then again, um, uh, object protection. Uh, what is that? Again, yeah, encapsulation. Object encapsulation is also very important. Okay, and so we have the time that fixed delta time. Fixed delta time is used for fixed update and. Uh, delta time is used for regular code update. Okay, then we have camera speed here, which of course is the cam the time at which it moves to the it moves towards the player. Well, looks at the player, let's just say. And coin is right next. Okay, and uh, you can see I have not used Unity Engine. I directly used Unity Engine dot mono behavior because uh, there's only one place where I use it, so I thought it would just be easier. Okay, and then we have an internal coin arrangement and a string C name. C name means common name. Okay, parent is the coin arrangement, which is the next on the list. Okay, and we destroy it. So if parents, if not parent or name set, meaning they have not set its name yet, then we set it to true, and then we speak C name space bar is. It's botanical association for C name. And then we print C name, which is not required, but I kept it for debugging, so no point in getting rid of it. So half this has not half hat has not help. Okay. And so we destroy the game of this. Me, uh, if you do this, I've actually tried it once. It turns out that that just removes the component. It does. And so that's what we want. We want to destroy the game object. Okay. So then we now go to coin arrangement and name set again internal so that can so that coin can access it. And over here we have a game object m underscore underscore f a v s prefab. It's an acronym. Food and vegetables prefab. Uh, I mean fruits and vegetables prefab. Then we have this m underscore underscore. It should be k underscore underscore, but it really doesn't matter. Okay. So f fruits, fruits and vegetables prefab. And so this just means a null coalescing operator, which roughly translates to. Uh, let's see. And 
it is roughly equal to null question mark colon as you see there yeah see dot 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 now you know we do all render use null coalescing operator So that's what it is for. It translates x equal equal null question mark y colon x. Well, you could also do this other way and not equal and put m underscore underscore x there and y here. Here it's x equals y, but it really doesn't matter. I'm using it, I'm explaining it in the most generic way possible so that you can also use it in other situations. Okay? Now back to start. <laughs> okay. So then over here we instantiate the fruits and vegetables prefab and then we are at the transpose position with quarter and the identity as the rotation and the transform being its current. The transform being its current location. Uh, parent. And then the FAVO fruits and vegetables object fruits and fruit and vegetable okay will be f o v o fruit or vegetable but uh, never mind and fruits and vegetables object and we have a random index for how many ch child's children it has and we loop through all of them and so long as it is not equal to the random index we turn it on the, the child or game object will set active false Otherwise, we set fruits and vegetable object to its current game model, and we don't turn it off. Okay, by default, all are on. Okay, and then we go through all of the transform dot child count, and then we get the transform dot child, this current child. Then we get the coin on it. Then we instantiate this fruit and vegetable object in that each coin in every coin okay uh, if there is a coin if there, there might be some other children as well of this very transform but we only check if there is a coin okay this just means if coin is not equal to null then we instantiate the fruits and vegetables object at the child dot position with the fruit and vegetable transform dot rotation this is important because some have been rotated in a separate way and then we have the child is the parent and then its parent is this well you could do transform with parent but then again we'll have to access it and uh, we only have to do it once but okay no never mind about that it's uh we just set it explicitly to this so that we we make it certain and then we set its dot c name common name to fruit and vegetables object dot name and then we destroy this or oh, this one over there because now there's nothing useful in it and even this inside it is now no longer required because we have instantiated it in each of the coins and then we set both of these to turn so that we can so that we don't do any further tampering. I might have to write down some more code down there. So just to make sure I have explicitly put it down there, set both of them to none. Okay. <sighs> Game manager. Shall we? So now we have the trans. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of required. It's much faster, you know? That's why I don't do blade at all. I for instance. And then we have the game of the point and points, point higher arrangements and tricks. And then the enemy prefab, game over screen, play screen, pause screen, new high score, display text, all this. And then the slider, master volume and background volume. And we have the audio source and timer dot initializer, m underscore tree timer and m underscore point timer. I might have shown this way before m underscore goes away when it is shown. Also underscore goes away because once I've tried something like yeah, serialized field int I mean bool underscore 360 or should it rotate 360 degrees and if 
just to wait for a few minutes or two. Ah yes, it's on level. And ta-da! Now the score also goes away. In case of numbers, that is a for sure. And then this just is used for initializing the randomized error. Of course, it's obvious. Randomized error initializer. And so utilities is my personal own utilities file. And so I have created it. In that I put a handy 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 initializer for easily initializing them so that they the, the the front person can notice and manipulate it very easily. So like this. Uh, okay. And so uh, by the way, this just is to make sure they won't keep shouting at me. This is an initialize, this is an initialize, it's always null, it's always null. What they don't know is this is where it is edited and all. Okay. So I have to do that as well. And then we have the enemy timer, coin timer, tree timer, and tree x. X just means x just means that the x position, which we will start moving forward and forward and forward. Okay. We surely use the x position. Yeah, we only use the x position, so why keep it like that? Load. is on and uh, this is and over here we have master volume slider dot value we set it to the player prefs the master volume meaning we get the previous shared value audio listeners volume we also set it to that because we can show it just like this like so Same we can do here, and so here for the background wall, background music's volume, the audio source we set it, audio source's volume we set it to the volume slider value which we set to the background volume, and then we resume. Well, not technical resume we started, but then again it hasn't started, so resume is good enough. Okay. And then we have the enemy timer which we initialize with that, and so coin timer and it's very easy over here for me. I don't have to type down anything and create many, many, many new serialized fields. Just one. Very handy. Okay. So now we have spawn enemies, spawn coins, and spawn trees. Now we set the coin timer dot stop. We set all of these to false uh, explicitly just to make sure. And then we set the x spawn location to 30. Then we spawn start spawn start trees. Meaning we spawn the starting trees and all that. And it doesn't quite work, and then we set the high score text to high score e. score plus player dot to string d6, which can be simplified, you know, like you know, like this. But it really doesn't matter. You can use string interpolation <coughs> where it would translate into a color sign. interpolation by the way now on update just means it will you need to call this on update it may pass you can time dot delta time because uh, it also needs a delta time for it so that it can decrease it properly and this just spawns up at uh, respective locations you can take a look at the numericals yourself move vector 3 3 x spawn location random range will just randomly put it in the z direction and here and here like this so z x Y. Okay. Even though in most systems it's X, Y, and Z, but in Unity, unfortunately, it's not like that because it also has 2D, so X and Y. Okay? So that's the reason. And so the start location we put it at 5, and then we spawn the coins. <coughs> We spawn the coins at random places, either higher arrangement or lower arrangement. If we spawn the higher arrangements very rarely, but most of the time we only spawn the normal arrangements. This is just at a higher location. Okay? Much higher location and pattern near the identity. 
Then at the spawn enemy, we spawn it at all the numericals and all that. Uh, this is just a harder location and larger enemies and more enemies. We spawn two enemies at higher, so it gets harder for you to catch the points. Over here, we just instantiate the trees at their respective positions. Okay? Then we increase the score by a certain amount and we start score plus plus and score, which we can also transform. Score, hold on. Start, pause, resume, and quit. Pause just sets all of these off and sets the pause screen on. True. Then scale to zero. Resume turns on the play screen, turns off all other screens, and sets the time scale to one. Quit. Scene management dot quit and reset high score resets the high score. Which again I can convert to string interpolation. Okay, so we'll do it like. 